Mr. Speaker. I also are rising to speak to Bill C-306, an act to establish a Crimean Tatar deportation memorial today, tabled by the member for Edmonton Griesbach. On this aspect of the bill, proposing recognition of the mass deportation of the Crimean Tatars and the ongoing atrocities perpetrated against them, I believe the member will find considerable support. Ukraine has passed such a bill memorializing that date of the atrocities and the removal of the Crimean Tatars. Stalin's forced expulsion of the Crimean Tatars in 1944 was among the more heinous crimes against humanity committed during a century littered with atrocities. The entire Crimean Tatar people, the indigenous people of Crimea, were exiled to the Soviet East in 1944 by the totalitarian regime of Joseph Stalin. Hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children were forcibly and violently deported. Half, almost, almost half lost their lives during the first year of exile for no crime other than their language, culture, and traditions. Most reprehensibly, the women and children were separated from the men and the men forced to fight in the Stalin forces. The vast majority of remaining in the Tatar community returned home to Crimea from exile in the early 1990s. This was largely due to the welcoming policy of the government of the independent Ukraine. Mr. Speaker, it's for this reason that the Crimean Tatars and their political and civic institutions are fiercely loyal to Ukraine. Today again, the Tatar people are living in fear as they have again been exiled, this time by Putin. Little mention is made currently of the Russian Federation's illegal annexation of the Crimea in 2014. Crimean Tatars almost uniformly opposed the Russian Federation's annexation of the Crimea in 2014. According to Amnesty International, Crimean Tatars have faced repressive measures from media outlets being shuttered to activists being arrested and disappeared. Tatars have been forbidden to publicly commemorate the Day of Remembrance of the Last Deportation. Last month, Russia banned the Mejilis, the Crimean Tatar Assembly, accusing it of extremism. As a result, anyone involved in one of the more than 250 local Mejilises across Crimea now risk arrest. They either live in fear in Crimea or they are living in fear on the borders of Crimea, their original territories. According to Eastern European scholar Ansi Kohlberg, many historians believe that the true motivation behind the genocide of Crimean Tatars was the geopolitical location of the Crimea seen by the Soviets as an obstacle and bridgehead in the way of Stalin's aspirations to gain control of the Turkish Straits in Constantinople. And now, in modern times, we're seeing the same with Russia wanting to claim Crimea. The systemic erasure of the Crimean Tatars was holistic in nature, with even Crimean Tatar place names changed to Soviet ones, mosques converted to movie theaters or worse, homes, livestock, and gardens seized, and mention of Crimean Tatars was deleted or abbreviated in reference works. In other words, they were erased. Crimean Tatars were forbidden to reside in or speak of their homeland. It wasn't even possible to preserve a Crimean Tatar identity in personal documents. The decision by Russia to again suspend the Mejelis of the Crimean Tatar people and ban all its activities essentially denies the Crimean Tatar community the right to freedom of association and therefore denial of their basic human rights. In November 2015, Ukraine's parliament recognized this crime as an act of genocide against the Crimean Tatar people and established May 18 as the day of remembrance of the genocide of the Crimean Tatar people. According to Paul Grodd, national president of the UCC, in quotes, today the indigenous Crimean Tatars together with the Ukrainian people and other ethnic and religious minorities living in Crimea face severe repression by the Russian occupiers. It's vital for all members of Canada's parliament to support this important legislation and to ensure that Canada continues to take concrete actions to oppose Russia's illegal occupation and annexation of Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula." End of quotes. Mr. Speaker, only last year I had the honour of standing alongside representatives 
of all of the main parties in this chamber, all expressing support to the stalwart leader of the Crimean Tatars, Member of Parliament Mustafa Jemilev. It's critical that we deliver on those words and lend support to their long-standing struggle for recognition of their human rights. I support this bill going to committee and for consideration of potential amendments. I know there are some concerns with the name of the bill and the preamble. It's my hope that perhaps more might be done rather than just naming a Memorial Day to enable them to live as peace and as a community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.